Hello, welcome back to Raise Create Cards. Today is Friday, February the 25th, and I am Ray Henderson, an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. If you have been here before, welcome back. If you're new here, thank you for dropping in, and I hope you'll stay and uh, learn some new and exciting things. Uh, one of the things that I needed to share with you is that starting March 1st, they are, Stamping Up is running a sale that incorporates the mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine and several stamp and Die bundles. Um, so they're running this sale for the whole next month. You can save 20%. The mini stamp and cut and emboss machine normally retails for $60. It has been reduced only for the month of March for $48. So I went ahead and I printed this out. I don't know how much of a sneak peek you're kind of getting there. And of course on the first page, one of the first sets is the all squared away bundle. Normally 50, now it's 40. And I got to tell you, I have been remiss in ordering this. I think this is adorable. I think you could get a lot of mileage out of this. Uh, it is in the annual catalog. And uh, so, yes, um, maybe it's a good thing I haven't put in my newest order yet because I'm probably going to add some of these items to my list. Um, but as you can see here, there are 12 more sets you can um, be as creative as you want to be with some of this. And I don't know if this actually means that these are some that will not carry over. Um, and some of these I already have. Some of these I do not have. Um, but uh, there is something here for everyone to save money on. And that is from the 1st through the 31st of March. So check this out. Um, you can uh, go to my store and put in uh, these item numbers. And I will try to list everything that is in this flyer below the video. Uh, I'm only allowed to do so long of a description. So we'll see how that goes. But I will do my best to put a link to this so that you can take a look at it and uh, be prepared. So, celebration is almost over, guys. Um, we only have two or three more days. If there is anything in the celebration catalog that you have had your eye on that you would like to earn for free with a $50 order, some, uh, there, you know, there's at least a couple of items in the celebration catalog um, that would require a $100 order. And we all know it just does not take long to spend that much, does it? So, the blessings have just been flooding my way. Uh, my mother-in-law cooked for me and my husband. Um, I stopped by after work and loaded up. There was home-cooked pinto beans. They were amazing. Uh, cornbread, Brussels sprouts, deviled eggs, mashed potatoes, all kinds of stuff that I came home with. And uh, we're still eating on it. She's a wonderful cook. I love her dearly. Um, a girl could not ask for a better mother-in-law. But while I was there, there was an Amazon bag <clears throat> that she put in the stuff. She said, do not open this until you get home. So when I got home, the, one of the first things I did was open that bag. I wanted to know what was in there. Lo and behold, y'all have seen the brushes that I have used uh, for blending that I bought before I became a um, demonstrator with Stamping Up and before they came out with their own brushes. She had another 10-pack of brushes, and they were identical to what I already had. Is that not phenomenal? There were 10 more brushes. Guys, I am set thanks to her. Um, I can't see me ever needing any more brushes than the ones I have here. Phenomenal. How amazing is that? And you'll notice the holder I have them in. 
So I had been looking, several companies out there, including Tailored Expressions, have come out with their own um, holders for these brushes. And Tailored Expressions has one that's also in teal, but I think hers is all in teal, I'm not sure. Um, and I had been thinking about getting one. And when I was at work the other day, I happened to desperately need to go get a new tube of mascara. I had been using the same one. It was gloppy. Ladies, y'all know how it gets. And I thought, I really can't put it off anymore. I have got to get a new one. And so when I was over there, and now it's, oh, here it is. On a clip strip, I saw this organizer. How awesome. Um, those of you who frequent Walmart, you know about the clip strips. Glam and Beauty is a regular feature in different departments. This was hanging over in the cosmetics. And the price that was marked was $5.24. A bargain, right? Plus, it came with a free cleaning tool, which yours truly, I went ahead and threw it away. Okay, guys, I'm, you know, you do you. But when I get done ink blending, I simply take them to my kitchen sink and I just rinse them out. Um, most of the inks that we use uh, through stamping up are, are colored inks and things. They are water-based, so they just rinse right out. I let them dry. Um, you know, some people want to have a dedicated brush to every color of ink that they have. That's fine if that's what you want to do. Um, some will delegate a brush for the reds, one for the purples, one for the greens. I am terrified that I will forget or not clean it well enough on paper or on a cleaning tool. And I might say I use something really dark like shaded spruce and maybe I didn't get all the ink out. And the next time I go to do a green, maybe it's a real light green like mint macaron. I really don't want to take the chance of um, getting some of that dark green ink into a light green ink pad. So yours truly, I take them to the sink, I rinse them in cool water, no soap, please don't use soap. You don't need the soap to get out your water-based inks because if you leave even a tiny, tiny trace, it will want to attract everything. So just rinse them, clean water, lay them bristle up to dry, and you're good to go again. Um, now, the brushes that she got me from Amazon are called Yosin, if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, and there was a little manual that, that came in there with it, and it shows all your different brushes. Now, these are meant to be makeup brushes, but I've been doing really well with them for ink blending. So if that's something you've kind of thought about, maybe you've seen brushes similar to that because the first few I bought was before Stamping Up came out with their blending brushes. Again, they were on a clip strip and right after I bought that package, they just like totally disappeared and I've not seen them back in the store. But uh, I did not pay 524 for this. I paid under $5. And then, of course, with tax on it, it probably was a few pennies over $5. But uh, I didn't pay much for this. And this is awesome. And I don't know if you can tell the way these little slits are made. They form to whatever you push down in there. And you can use the small ones. If you have something that's really small that would fit down in there, you could definitely do that. Um, and I still have room for even more brushes. But uh, how amazing was that? So, yes, I mean, my blessings just never cease to stop. We've had rain for the last three days almost nonstop. And I know we all kind of get tired of the rain. But, hey, guys, spring is coming. I mean, I am already seeing signs of life. My daffodils, although the flowers themselves aren't up yet, I have got the daffodil leaves galore outside in the front yard. So, all right, I thought for today we would revisit doing sympathy cards. And I wanted to share with you that they can be very simple 
but elegant, okay? One of the designs that I had in my stash of card ideas is this one. And I used a very vanilla card base and I simply used some of our gold metallic paper to cut out this leaf or fern, almost looks like a fern kind of. Um, and that set is in the current catalog and it is Forever Fern. Love this set. I'm hoping it carries over into the new catalog later this year. But if it doesn't, do you really want to risk missing out on this wonderful stamp and die set? It's beautiful. So flexible. Um, when they first introduced this, there was some DSP that went with it. I don't think we're carrying that particular DSP anymore, but hey, the sky's the limit. Um, I've used different colors on the leaves, the reds, the purples, different colors to make a grouping on a card, and it was just absolutely beautiful. The sentiments are awesome. Um, this is one of those sets that you will use over and over and over. Sympathy cards, birthday cards, get well cards, encouragement cards. There is not a card that you could not make with this stamp set. And does it have splatter? Oh, it does indeed. There is splatter in there. So that is what I cut this out with. And originally what I had done was cut two strips of just plain cardstock. And then I don't know if you can see it. I did emboss it and I embossed it with our painted texture embossing folder. And I did that because this color combo is suitable for a male or a female, okay? Simple, but elegant. Very nice. And here is the embossing folder, the painted texture. It is a 3D. It is really thick. You will want that gray specialty plate to run it through. And the sentiments that I used on here... Um, is actually my favorite with this particular design. However, uh, I'm not sure that Peaceful Moments is still current. It may be current, but here is the one that I use. And this is one of those, retired or not, it's going to stay in my stash. However, there is Inspired Thoughts is in the annual catalog. And here is a really nice with heartfelt sympathy that would also fit in that space. And I thought we would do this card today, but I'm going to change it up just a little bit to make it a little simpler to do. So again, we do have the very vanilla card base. I've got my pieces here for the inside. And this time, I simply cut a strip of mossy meadow two and a, two and a quarter inches yeah, two and a quarter inches by five and a quarter to go on the front. And we're going to leave just a little bit of a border right here. And then the sentiment will be stamped here. And the foliage will go right up there. So real quick, let's just go ahead and put this together. See, I'm not really having to use anything special. And if you don't have like die cuts or anything like that, that's fine. You absolutely could get away with just putting a strip of textured paper on the front and a sentiment. Um, I don't tend to use bling on a sympathy card, but you absolutely could. Um, but let's go ahead and put the inside layers together. And y'all know me by now. You know that I like um, narrow borders. So my piece of mossy metal for the inside is cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Okay. Let's start to get this down. Now, the one thing that I do have to go elsewhere for and buy are scripture stamps. And, you know, for some people, that's not their thing um, with a sympathy card. For me, it is. Um, I just really, really want um, 
verses on the inside. However, for the sake of this video, I am not going to put one in here. Um, and I guess you're kind of on your own in trying to find scripture stamps. Hobby Lobby sometimes is a good place to get them. Um, I would love to order mine from Stamping Up because I know the quality of stamps I would be getting would be would be great. Um, however, there are, you know, if you'll just Google scripture stamps for card making, uh, there are some really good companies out there um, for you to pick from and choose from. Uh, I really don't want to try to recommend one company over another because, to be very honest, there are several out there that do a really good job with this. All right. This is textured very heavily, so you do want to use a little bit more glue on this than what you normally would just to make sure of good ad adhesion. And... I don't know who was hollering. I think it might have been my husband hollering. We have got a crew here that is cutting down two large sugar maple trees in the front yard. And I don't know what he was hollering at me for, but I do have my video in progress note on the outside of my card room door. So... I'm guessing he figured it out. Maybe he did. Don't know. Now, I deliberately cut my strips a little long. I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, if you've ever cut one that's just been a hair too short, you know how irritating that is to have to recut it. Also, I cut it a little bit longer um, because any time you have a heavy textured embossing folder, sometimes that will kind of shrink up the paper just a little bit. So just to make sure that we were covered from top to bottom, I did cut it a little bit longer. I'd rather have to take my snips and cut off a little bit than to have to totally recut a piece, totally re-emboss, okay? We don't want to spend any more time making our cards than what we have to, right? Okay, I have got my Mossy Meadow ink and the With Deepest Sympathy stamp. Use what you have, guys. You know, I say this in probably every video. You don't have to have what I'm using. Um, and definitely, you know, when the new catalog comes out or even the current catalog, that's still going to be good for a while. Um go through there and really take a hard look at those sentiment sets and things. And I think you're going to find that there are some treasures in there you may have overlooked. And yours truly, I really don't know what all is going to carry over to the new catalog. Don't take a chance. If there's something you've had your eye on, please, please, please just go ahead and get it. And then you know you're good to go. All right took that off let me get out my stamping scrub one of the sets too we've had it now for a couple of years and I and I really want to do another video on this stamp set the timeless tulips it has also got some awesome sentiments and I've been playing with it and coming up with strategies for mass producing cards and so I'm seriously thinking about doing a video with that okay all right Let's go ahead and get our foliage. I cut this out of our brushed metallic cardstock. You have copper, you have gold, and I think silver in there. I will tell you, this is thicker than most of the metallic cardstock we have had, which is awesome because you end up with a very, um, What's the word I'm looking for? It's definitely, you don't have to double cut and glue card um, die cuts together to get uh, some kind of good thickness. This automatically has good thickness. So let's get this glue on here. I'm trying to be careful. You know, when your glue bottles start to get empty, it's not as hard to be real fine with it. 
Um, and I will tell you, do not get glue on your metallic cardstock. You won't get it off. It's gonna smear and you're gonna end up having to recut. This stuff is a little thicker and I will tell you, in my particular machine, for me to get a good cut with one or two passes, I ended up with about five layers of cardstock and I know that seems excessive, but everybody's um, cardstock uh, machine is different and so you just kind of go with uh, how your machine works and how your machine behaves and you may have a machine you don't even have to add any shims and it'll cut like a dream uh, want that kind of coming over into where the sentiment is to kind of get that flow of continuity and I really should have been prepared with a block. Well, I'm going to use this one. My leaves from my uh, Timeless Tulips are on here and I will be explaining why they're on here in the shape that they're in when I do the video on it. So sometimes just putting that down and applying firm, even pressure just for a few seconds and it will help that adhere without you having to put your hands all in it. A little bit more there. There we go. So how simple and how easy was that? Do you like that design? And I'll tell you something I usually do on the back. Um, again, you're on your own with finding your own um, sympathy stamps and scripture stamps but uh, I've got one here can you tell it, it's like <laughs> really loved let me get my mossy meadow ink everybody who gets a homemade card even for the first time we all will flip that card over and we'll look on the back to see who made it and that is where you can add your own stamp and just making sure I've got that mounted straight. But for a sympathy card, I don't put my initials on the back as made by me. I have a favorite verse that I love to share with anyone, whether they are uh, Christian minded or not, because it's very encouraging. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted, and that's from Matthew 5, 4. And I think that is so appropriate, and that is the only time I will not put my name on the back of a card that I give to someone, okay? All right, so what do you think? Here's my original design that is in my idea box, and then here it is with not cutting that strip in two, um, and then changing up the colors a little bit, going from blue to green. Uh, Cherry Cobbler, uh, Mary Merlot, um, a, you know, even a, a deep purple would be really pretty on these cards. So, all right, that's the first one. We have one more, and I just, you know, my whole goal for today, uh, I don't know if we can have enough sympathy card videos, to be very honest. I mean, I truly don't. Um, it's not something we like to do. And, you know, with COVID and everything else that's been going on, I think we have all been required to make a whole lot of sympathy cards um, that we really don't want to have to do. And, uh, it, you know, it can be kind of hard to keep your mindset up while you're doing them. And sympathy cards sometimes, sometimes it's a hard balance between being encouraging and uplifting and being too dark and too somber with their cards. So the other day I did this card and again, where I got the sentiment at, um, it is retired. This was in celebration catalog last year and I immediately fell in love with this set and had to have it. And again, this is one retired or not, it is staying uh, in my card room. Um, but I just love the sentiments and I especially love the font. Is that not a beautiful thank you? And I love that wishing I could heal your heart. I have done a card where I had that on the outside that the sorry for your loss and the, uh, the font just lent itself so well. And uh, 
then there are some sub sentiments too that you could always elect to put on the inside of your card. So yeah, that one is retired, however. Currently in our annual catalog is this one. And if you've overlooked it, go back and take another look at it. It's called Throw It Together. Now, these are smaller sentiments, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. You absolutely can use these for the outside or the inside. Um, they're encouraging. They are compassionate. And I really appreciate this praying for blankets of healing around you and yours. Obviously, that is an awesome, awesome sentiment for a sympathy card, okay? So, that is in the annual catalog, and uh, I thought we might redo this card just a little bit, because when I did it, when I was playing, I used a retired embossing folder for the background. Now, the DSP is actually in the celebration catalog i believe it is and grab this flowering <laughs> i can't even talk today flowering fields designer series paper um beautiful it's beautiful it's two-sided as you can tell mine is well loved and chopped on okay um beautiful paper um, it coordinates with the, the tulip set that is in the mini catalog. So, I wanted something easy so I could mass produce sympathy cards. I wanted something that wasn't too barren and too plain. Now, some of the colors that are in this particular piece of DSP is uh, Mango Melody. So, I used that for my card base. But I was worried that it might be just a little bit too too bright, maybe, for a sympathy card. I don't know. So, I was sure to put two layers on the inside. And again, these are stamps that I have gotten elsewhere. Um, and again, you do you. But uh, I wanted to redo this using the same design, the same layout, but a little bit different colors. So, I've cut another strip. And this strip of DSP is cut two inches by five and a quarter, okay? And on both of these cards, if I didn't tell you, I am so sorry. I have got um, just your typical card base scored at four and a quarter by five and a half. And yeah, so I took and used Evening Evergreen for my base. I have Soft Succulent for my outer layer and I used the ornate floral embossing folder. It's a 3D embossing folder. It's a thick one um, and it is in the annual catalog. Okay, so I've got that and then I have my strip of DSP again cut two by five and a quarter and it looks like did I cut that five and a quarter? Because that doesn't look like that's going to fit. Now, here's the thing. I had another strip of it earlier. Where'd it go? It was laying by my cutter and I looked at it and I bet I put it back in my bag. And I'm betting what I did was pick up the wrong piece. And now I don't even see that. Hang on just a second. And I'm going to cut another one. See, and all my prepping and all my planning, and I thought I had everything ready, and I didn't. Now, I've cut this one a little long just to make sure. Yep. As you can tell, there'll be some hanging over. I'll have to trim that off, but that's fine. That's fine. Don't mind doing that at all. And let's go ahead and get this on here again. Anytime you've got really intense embossing, use a little extra glue. You'll notice I tend to only put it around the edges. 
um, when it's just plain cardstock going to plain cardstock and maybe with a line through the middle. But uh, on this, yeah, you definitely do want to add just a little bit more just to make sure you get good adhesion. Let's put this on here. And on both of these cards, you know, four and an eighth by five and three eighths, I like my little skinny borders. And there are times I do the traditional five by four and a quarter, but I, I don't know. I just like little hints sticking out. Again, we're going to have to use a little bit more glue than you normally would on your DSP. Just a little bit more. Not real thick, just more of it to make sure you get good adhesion to that uh, DSP. I'm going to bring this a little closer to me. And I'm just eyeballing it, guys. I'm not trying to um, measure everything. You know what I did? I went ahead. I should have glued this on first because now I'm going to have a snippety time trying to get this cut off straight. Oh, there we go. We're getting it. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Good deal. Can't believe I was able to pull that off. Okay, I already have somewhere, I did, I swear on my time, I had my outer sentiment ready and die cut. Am I going to have to do it again? I was really trying to make this a short video. Guys, I've got a, I've got an appointment here in a little bit and I'm not even ready to go out the door yet. Um, okay. I'm not sure. Found it. All right. So here I have stamped, sorry for your loss. And that is from the Heal Your Heart, which is retired. Sorry for that. And normally I will go ahead and uh, die cut twice. So to die cut this, I use the rectangle stitched framelits. And again, guys, if y'all don't have this in your set, you really, really need it. Look how versatile, long and skinny, wide and fat really big for cutting out layers for the front of your card and then there is that really neat square that is in there um i hope stamping up doesn't plan on retiring that anytime soon but we've already lost our layering circle dies okay and uh, i'm terrified one of these days we're going to lose that too now as you can tell from the way i laid this down you have several options you can put it at the top you can put it toward the bottom you can put it in the middle like i did on my uh, original card put it anywhere you please i am going to pop that up on dimensionals grab my little bag here i have a little ziploc bag that i put my bits and pieces in until they're all used up let me get some of these out don't be stingy with your dimensionals. I know I tell you guys that all the time, but it kills me to see somebody with a, actually a, a large die cut and they put on two or three and they call it good. Well, mm, even if you're handing it to someone in person, uh, no, it's not good enough. It really is not. You want there to be good support I have been told personally, and it was very recently, it was just within the past week, um, of someone I had sent a card to that was meant to be encouraging. And evidently, it did the trick because they are constantly going back and rereading that card, and they've got it propped up where they can see it. Well, that means it's getting handled, right? They also have small children in the home, and they may also be handling it. I have got a glue booger on my fingernail. Hold on. There we go. Um, so, yes, even if you're going to be given it in person, let that person know that they were worth you putting extra time and attention into it. Because if they're not, 
just go buy a Hallmark card, you know, and be done with it. Or buy one of those all-occasion gift box boxes of cards and be done with it. Um, when we make these, we really are, are sending a strong message. Hey, you're worth a homemade card. You're worth my time and attention. It will mean so much more to them, okay? Now, I did use out of that um, Inspired Thoughts, Praying for Blankets of Healing Around You and Yours, and I stamped it in the Evening Evergreen just like I did for the front sentiment. And, uh, of course, we all have our own way of putting our layers together. I just like to start from the bottom and work to the top. I mean, I could have glued my white sentiment layer to this first and then just put the whole thing down at once. And if that's how you like to do it, that's great. Um, but I just like to go layer by layer. I don't know. I guess it's habit. Let's see if I can hold my mouth right and get that in there straight. There we go. Yep, got it straight up. But I know whenever we do sympathy cards and we know someone is hurting, we are praying for them, right? We're praying for them and we're praying. Friends and family help so very much when we're going through things. But honey, there is nothing like God's touch for healing and for comfort and for peace while we're going through all that grief. It doesn't take the grief. It doesn't do that. But it means everything when God's special touch is on that person. So absolutely, praying for blankets of healing. All right. Now, because this card base is really dark and I can't stamp that scripture stamp on there, I took a piece of the paper. It, it's actually the back side of this piece. See that? See how it kind of has light and dark areas? And even in the dark area, the little strip that I had, I was still able to stamp my little scripture and I can just simply glue it to the back of the card. Let's get this on here. And I'm good. And when they flip it over, they're still going to see that scripture. I can kind of put it straight so it's not wonky. And there we go, guys. How easy was that? Doing sympathy cards does not have to be a big ordeal. Um, I usually have to go um, and kind of get my mindset straight before I even go into my card room and understand that God's in control. It's okay because I do tend to kind of get uh, a negative mindset, I guess with uh, sympathy cards and sometimes it can be distracting to the creativity but i'm hoping that these simple card designs that we did today and i don't know what's going to be your favorite um the very vanilla i love very vanilla honestly i probably don't use it enough and i did use the very vanilla thick for the card base, but I used the very vanilla regular card stock for my inside layer. I didn't need that to be thick. Um, but yeah, for the card base, yes, you definitely want a little bit more going on there. I think on this original one, I may have just used, no, nope, it was thick. It was thick. Okay, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me with YouTube. And if you feel like I may have something to offer you down the road, please hit the subscribe button. That really helps too. I cannot do YouTube lives until I get a thousand subscribers. All right, guys, y'all be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, yours truly has got a funeral to go to tomorrow night. You know, like I said, sometimes when it rains, it pours. Um, but yes, onward and upward, let's be grateful for every blessing that we have. And uh, don't forget to give that extra hug or that extra I love you to those that are around you. You never know whose day you'll make.
All right, till we meet again, be blessed. Bye.